Hi, I'm Larry, this is Beth, and this is Tucker. We're in Marshalltown, Iowa, USA, and we watch Trucker Josh Vlogs on YouTube. Somewhere in there is a weasel. Weasel? Weasel? Oh, there he is. <laughs> morning, Diesel. Good morning, everybody. I am feeling great today. I had a great sleep. I'm excited to be going home. And I'm excited to actually have gotten a decent night's sleep. We've been here a while now. It's uh, 8.30 in the morning. We got here yesterday. What? What time did we get here? Like five in the afternoon or something? I slept most of the entire time. Feels so good. So here's our load. We got this steel. Oh, diesel, hey, you shouldn't go under there. Don't go between the wheels of trucks. That's not safe. Don't do that. Got this steel. It's actually a pretty easy load to tie down. It was all pretty level. And we're taking that back home. And off we go. One full day and a little short day and we're home. And then we got a lot of work to do at home. <laughs> but we're gonna have a lot of fun too. Let's see if I can get back on the road. So this truck stop's actually pretty nice. That's the Edgerton truck stop in Wisconsin. It is right along the interstate. They had decent showers, lots to choose from for food and fruits and stuff. going to get it washed this morning. Uh, I passed by the Petrol in Portage, Wisconsin. I was going to pull into the Blue Beacon there and give her a bath, but I checked the weather up ahead just to make sure that I wasn't, you know, washing it in vain for no reason. And apparently, as you can see up ahead of us here, I couldn't see it at the time, but uh, I asked Google what the weather's like in Minneapolis up ahead. And apparently they're having a thunderstorm right now and it's going to be pouring rain all day. So that would have been pointless to wash it, but I do want to get the truck washed before I get home. So I asked Google, what's the weather like in Fargo, North Dakota? And there is clear skies and no rain expected for the next week. So apparently we're going to get through this thunderstorm before we get there and they have a blue beacon in Fargo, North Dakota. I'm going to stop there tonight and wash the truck there. That way I can show up at home with a nice clean truck and not waste my money. There's a little tip for you from Trucker Josh. You don't want to waste your money. Check what the weather's like ahead before spending however much into washing your truck. For me, what I do in a typical wash bay or a wash, I'll go for uh, just a regular truck wash and engine wash and undercarriage, which usually brings me to about 65 to 70 dollars us which is close to 90 dollars canadian could go up to 100 dollars canadian just for one wash so you don't want to throw that money out the window and just you know throw it into the rain fargo north dakota their blue beacon's a little more expensive i think it's 75 dollars us there for my typical wash which is Whatever, you want to charge more? I thought they were all the same, but no, it's actually different locations charge different prices. Maybe it's different taxes in different states. I don't know what the reasoning is, but uh, it is what it is. So we'll pay a little bit extra, but at least uh, 
uh, we won't be just throwing throwing the money out into the storm, you know. But we're here in Wisconsin right now. We're getting close to Black River Falls. We'll get very close to the Canadian border tonight, and we'll get home tomorrow. You see? Good thing I didn't wash the truck. I'm getting a nice natural pre-wash here. And we'll go use the soap and stuff over in Fargo later today. Perfect. I would have been so upset if I wasted all that money and then drove into this. <laughs> I don't always remember to check the weather ahead, but I'm glad I did today. It's supposed to be like this all the way through Minneapolis. And somewhere between uh, Minneapolis and Fargo, headed west, we're supposed to pull out of this storm. I'll take this over snow any day. Things have escalated. Everybody, please turn your headlights on in this weather. Otherwise, I can't see you in my mirrors. These guys in front of me are making me a little bit nervous. They keep slamming on their brakes because they're scared of the water. And I'd like to go around them because of that because I don't want to suddenly, you know, have them screech to a stop in front of me. I don't trust them. But I also don't trust people in this lane to have their headlights on. And if I turn over and they don't have their headlights on, I can't see them. I'll run them right off the road. See here? There might be somebody there right beside me. I have no idea. I just sort of got to trust that people turn their headlights on when it's raining. Because in the US, for some reason, they don't have automatic driving headlights. Like in Canada, as soon as you put your vehicle in gear, your headlights come on, right? That's a law, you have to. They're called daytime running lights. You always have to have lights that come on as soon as your vehicle's in gear. But in the US, you can drive with all of your lights off. Like no lights at all. You can put it in gear and your, your headlights won't come on unless you turn them on or if you have automatic lights or something. But that, that's so weird. So in the States, I never, you know, you never know if people remember to turn their lights on or not. So here's your reminder when it's raining, turn your headlights on. Actually turn all your lights on so that your tail lights are on as well. Because in Canada, even though you put it in gear and your running lights turn on, that doesn't turn on your tail lights. And if you don't have your tail lights on in weather like this, it's hard for me to see you in front of me as well. I don't want to run into you, so just turn all your lights on. You should always have them on anyway, as soon as your vehicle's on. If your vehicle's equipped with automatic lights, just, you know, just turn to the automatic lights. I don't know why people don't do that, but... Just trying not to kill anybody out here. Got us some military here again. Moving from one base to the next, I guess. They always run a little under the posted speed limit, but always in a straight single file line. I wonder what's in here. Look at this. These trucks are just huge. That is awesome. You'd think they'd have American flags flying all over it, you know? But convoys like this are not uncommon to see in the US. For those of you who have never been here, it's, you might, I don't know, in Canada we don't see these very often. I don't know how it is in Europe or Australia, probably not as common, but, you know, they travel down the road, they aren't armed, well, they're armed in their vehicles, obviously, but <laughs> practically everyone on this road is armed. But the military, they don't travel along with like live ammunition in their big tanks and guns anyway, as far as I know. But who knows if they did? I wouldn't care. They're the good guys. Just giving her. I think this, oh, I think this is the lead con, lead vehicle here. You know, when I was younger, I was uh, thinking of joining the military in Canada. I even looked into joining the U.S. military. 
I found there would be more opportunities with the U.S. military, but uh, it's not easy for a Canadian just to go down and join a, <laughs> an American military. A lot of paperwork involved, a lot of money. But in Canada, I was thinking of joining. I wanted to be, a, I don't, to put it simply, like a, a tank driver. It's called a coyote. It's like a light uh, artillery vehicle, right? LAV. And I wanted to be a driver of one of those. I thought that'd be kind of fun. At the time, I was 18. We were at war in Afghanistan. And uh, the war in Iraq was just raging on, right? Some beautiful skies here in North Dakota. Just arrived in Fargo. Just left Minnesota. We're going to first go a little south, go to Flying J, fuel up our tanks. Then we're gonna go a little west to the Blue Beacon at the Petro or the TA, whatever, I think it's the Petro. Get a truck wash and then we're gonna head home, see how close we can get to home tonight yet. Uh, probably go to bed. I'm guessing either Grand Forks or just north between Grand Forks and the border. We'll do the rest tomorrow. For now, let's see what the fuel prices are here. I haven't checked yet. It's just one mile south of the intersection of the I-29 and I-94. Getting off the I-94 onto the I-29 south now. Flying J is just up on our right. I can't see the sign yet. They usually have decent fuel prices here compared to other parts of the states. Like compared to California, we'll say they got really good gas prices here. So the last time I fueled was in Alexandria a few days ago. So we went from Alexandria, Minnesota, all the way down to Evansville, Wisconsin, and then all the way back up here to Fargo. Uh, a little over a thousand, between a thousand and fifteen hundred miles. I'll have to look at exactly how much, but. Uh, Definitely over a thousand miles. I can usually go about 1500 miles between Phillips if I'm doing good on fuel. It all depends on how my fuel economy is, what freight I'm pulling, how the wind is, you know. But uh, I usually fuel up about every thousand miles. Two dollars and seventy-nine nine. Nah, I got. I see what you're doing there. It's two dollars and eighty cents per gallon for diesel. Two dollars fifty-four cents. For gas, that's probably around what 65 cents per liter Canadian, 65 70 cents, something like that, somewhere around there. Spent many nights here before, <laughs> not tonight though. I'm looking forward to getting a truck wash. I always love getting the truck washed, it's like getting a bath, it's really getting a massage. I don't know, I like it. Telling the e-log right now that we've uh, stopped here to fuel. Oh, it's nice to have a little bit of a break. Shut her down. I wonder what the temperature is outside right now. Okay, Google. What's the temperature outside? The current temperature in Sabin is 24. 24 degrees Celsius. That's a much better temperature than yesterday. Yesterday was 34 down in Wisconsin. I got a hair in my eye. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, eh, eh, not fun. Hopefully it'll come out. Sometimes I get one stuck in my eye and I can't get it out. And I just have to go to sleep and somehow during the night my body just cleans out my eye. Feels like we got it out now though. Alright, let's go fuel up. Look at this thing go, counting in US gallons there. It's going to be quite a bit, we were quite empty. You can fuel both sides at once here in the US. It goes a lot faster. 165 US gallons. All right, so I did the conversions here. That is 624 and a half liters. Uh, the price is 97 cents Canadian per liter. 
And the total cost in Canadian is $605.86 Canadian. So that was 1,610 kilometers. But I did idle last night because it was so hot, so wasted a bunch of fuel there. But at least I got a good night's rest, right? The best I've had all week. It was great. My dog didn't get heat stroke. Speaking of, you need some water there, buddy, don't you? Put your, throw that in your bowl before we leave. So it was exactly, uh, so it's 1,610 kilometers, pretty much exactly 1,000 miles between Phillips there. That's how far I can go on that amount of money and that amount of fuel, usually, give or take. Let's go get our truck washed. Streaking beacon. I kind of wish the blue beacon was at this truck stop because this truck stop is right on I-29 and I stop here a lot more often. I don't go to that Petro over there as often except to get a truck wash. Yeah, it is what it is. Look at these machines. Woo! Those look like fun. Oh, it's only half a machine. Oh, the other half's on the other truck. Wow. That would be fun. I'm not gonna lie, that would be fun. All right, well, I guess there's no point in washing the windshields and getting truck wash. Petro's just off to our right here. Hopefully there's not a big lineup at the truck wash. There usually is, but maybe we got lucky tonight. Go in here, let's see. It's all the way at the back. And they got two bays. Looks like there might not be that big of a lineup. No way. You go in the entrance and you go right here, this blue beacon enter sign. Sometimes it's confusing to find the blue beacon entrance at a truck stop. Let's see, let's see. Anybody? All around the corner here. There's nobody here. There's nobody in line. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Wow. Let's see. Go all the way around to the back. Let's see if there's anybody there. I think I'm just going to be able to drive right in. Holy smokes. Oh, I'm excited. One guy in line, but there's one bay that doesn't have any line. That is amazing. Do you guys ever get this kind of luck? This bay here is closed, but there's only one truck in line, just one. And I think he's gonna be rolling in right away. Wow, diesel. It's our lucky day. Should go buy a lottery ticket. Too bad I can't play the ones in the States. Next in line. All right. I got this vacuum cleaner out here. Apparently you gotta pay for a dollar. I guess that's while you wait. I got a vacuum that I paid for in the truck already. Thank you very much. Just about done here. We're just getting rinsed off and we'll be on our way. I'm not sure where I'm going to stop tonight, so uh, I'm going to have to run in and grab uh, something to eat for when I stop and for first thing in the morning. Just make sure I got food because I got no food in the truck and I don't really want to stock up because I'm going home for a while. I'll stock up before I leave on my next trip. All good? All right, here we go. Very nice, very nice. A clean truck again. I don't really want to go too far either because the bugs are going to be coming out now in the evening and they're going to dirty up the whole front of my truck. What can you do though? I have to get further in Fargo. I don't want to just stop here. I just had a coffee, so I'm just wired. I'm not going to be able to sleep if I stop here. A little bug, a few bugs never hurt anybody, I guess. Hey, it's Dustin from Dallas, Texas, delivering a bunch of airplane tires. You're watching TJV on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Have a wonderful day.